access to um, to finance and affordability. Mm-hmm. And I think this is where institutions like the World Bank, who through the IFC, for example, announced a two billion dollar commitment. <laughs> Welcome to Africa Business Radio. I am Chukunon Sumori. Now, Imperial and Risk Insights jointly hosted the official launch of the World Economic Forum New Champions Chapter in South Africa. Uh, this took place in Johannesburg, South Africa, and it is the first new local chapter and definitely a big fit. Now, joining us to talk about this big initiative is Esha Mansingh. She is the Executive Vice President, Corporate Affairs and Investors Relations at Imperial, also Young Global Leader World Economic Forum 2022, and Co-Chairman WF New Champions SA Board. Welcome, Esha. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you so much, Nonso, and uh, hello to all your listeners. Mm -hmm, Exactly. Thank you. Now, let's start with this. What is the World Economic Forum all about? So I'm sure many of you, when you think World Economic Forum, you probably think about Davos, for mm-hmm. example, which mm-hmm. is one of gatherings. But I think, you know, um, for some bit of background, the World Economic Forum really en- aims to engage with political, business, cultural and other leaders and organizations of society. So mm-hmm. they can really make an impact in shaping global, regional and industry agendas. And, um, and, you know, for a bit of history, the World Economic Forum was founded on a very stakeholder-based theory. Okay. And it makes it an organization that ultimately, in terms of all its agendas uh, and all the discussion it has with uh, global leaders, it's really about societal impact and, and business and organizations and leaders being accountable to society. And I think this is why the World Economic Forum has become... Um, you know, one of the leading associations in the world that brings together communities, leaders, industries to make the world a better place, effectively. Mm. Amazing, amazing. Um, now, there's a recent report from, you know, the World Economic Forum, uh, which was published in collaboration with the University of Cambridge, uh, National University of Singapore, and then Entrepreneurs Organization. And now this report highlights that small and mid-sized enterprises represent around 90% of all firms globally and by some estimates contribute to up to 70% of employment and global GDP. So please shed more light on this report. Uh, How much sustainable impact does SMEs have on the economy? Well, I think the SMEs play an essential, critical role in the economic development any country and particularly the employment uh, and creation of employment. Mm. I think what we need to understand about the SMMEs is that, you know, together um, they make an incredible collective impact um, to fuel economic growth of, of countries. And, you know, they create new job opportunities that I spoke about earlier. They um, can drive innovation. Um, you know, SMMEs can expand potential tax bases of countries And if you look at South Africa, particularly, which is um, my home country, uh, and it's where WEF launched its first uh, chapter of New Champions, as you said earlier, uh, in South Africa represents more than 95% of businesses. And it contributes to over 50% of the country's workforce. So that just gives you a a sense of, you know, the SME sector and the strength um, that it has behind backing it in many countries. And I think what we need to be focusing on um, as countries, as Africa, first and foremost, as business organizations, is to help facilitate um, more growth around SMMEs particularly. And we'll see the benefits. We'll see the benefits through improved, Mm. strong, stimulating growth, etc. I agree with you. I mean, I was going to ask if, uh, you know, if you feel Africa has fully recognized the importance of SMEs, you know, because, uh, but with this report, it seems like, you know, people, um, the world is seeing that SMEs hold um, some sort of a measure of power. It does. And, you know, I think for, for a period of time, SMEs became the buzzword, mm-hmm. um, you know, but did did the continent particularly fully unpack 
um, its role and what this could mean um, if they were in support for SMEs. And I think for Africa particularly, it is a journey, but I would like to recognize and acknowledge that, you know, the support for SMEs and its role that it plays in the development of the continent and economic growth stimulation is being recognized and that recognition is growing. The reason I actually say this is because there, there's some very tangible work that's being done across the continent um, through some big organizations, through, um, you know, through the World Bank via the IFC, um, through various studies. And, you know, just to quote a few stats that according to the Center for Strategic and Africa, um, you know, in Africa, SMMEs provide an estimated 80% of jobs across the continent. Oh. And that shows you the power, as we spoke about, of SMEs and, you know, and the critical role that they that they have to play. And if you look at sub-Saharan Africa, about 44 million micro, small and medium enterprises. And, you know, and I think that is definitely showing progression on the role of SMEs on the continent. But I still believe that we are, you know, we could do more. Um, as as a continent in Africa. Mm. And I think what we find at the moment is, is almost hindering uh, further growth of SMMEs is, of course, you know, access to, um, to finance and affordability. Mm. And I think this is where institutions like the World Bank, who through the IFC, for example, announced a $2 billion commitment to cities and their development on the African continent. And we need more of these, right? We need... Uh, we need big organizations, we need pa- private and public sector to come forward and say, we pledge to support the growth of SMEs. And I really believe that if we do so in a collaborative manner, um, you know, we can we, we can really contribute um, to pushing that number up beyond 80% um, on the African continent. Mm. And then, of course, finally, the point I would make in Africa is you're starting to see a lot of governments putting policy in place. Um that uh, requests the economies of those countries to invest more in SMMEs. Um, there are allocated for SMEs and particular programs in place with the attention of establishing and empowering SMMEs on uh, or in specific countries. And I think that will really um, accelerate um, the prominence of SMEs and the role they can play on the African continent. Yeah, it's amazing. I definitely agree with you. Now, this is where this partnership, you know, the World Economic Forum comes in. Uh, like I said, Risk Insights and Imperial are partnering in the forum to create the first new Champions Local Chapter in South Africa. Now, what is the aim of this local chapter and the partnership? So, first and foremost, World Economic Forum and, you know, uh, what it stands for. And, you know, the, the new Champions community is a fairly new community that it's created because I think the World Economic Forum, outside of the broader global initiatives that it undertakes, recognizes the importance of localization and so it's country level. And this is how the World Economic Forum New Champions community uh, came about. And this particular community mobilizes and capacitates corporate leaders and organizations to improve the state of the world, but by starting at a local level. And there's a very strong, particularly on the New Champions chapter in South Africa, um, where Risk Insights and Imperial were, um, you know, were appointed by the World Economic Forum through Risk Insights Partnership and the work Imperial is doing in social impact to lead and develop this community in South Africa. Um, and I was fortunate enough to have been a point in, in addition to um, Andre from Risk Insights. And what we decided as a board to, to use the mandate provided by WEF New Champions to do in South Africa is to focus on bringing together projects and organizations um, who have a vested interest and shared purpose around creating sustainable jobs. And that is almost the theme we've started to focus on because as we all know, South Africa has one of the highest unemployment rates in the world. Mm. And if we want to start with social impact at the grassroots level in South Africa, we really have to focus on projects that stimulate and create jobs sustainably. And that's going to be the very uh, core focus of some of the projects um, that we build together 
to the new champions community in South Africa. Mm. Now, speaking of this project, I know reading the release, I saw that you know, you know Risk Insights and Imperial, like you've said, have chosen three initial projects. Now, please speak to us about them. How does it work? So I think, first of all, as I mentioned earlier, the underlying theme is creating sustainable jobs. Yes. So every one of these three projects, um, you know, in some instances have been initiated uh, at grassroots level and has a very solid track number of jobs it has already created in the South African communities and it will continue to create um, going forward. So the, then we took a step further and looked at, well, outside of job creation, what are other critical needs um, and social challenges that we face in South Africa? And some of the areas, that, which is, is, is no different um, to many of the other African countries, is really around um, healthcare and access to healthcare and well-being, um, education, uh, gender quality, and then, of course, the big topic uh, in today's day and age, climate change. Mm. So the three projects that we um, that has been approved by WIF to be included as formal new champions projects for South Africa are Unjani Clinics. And Unjani Clinics is really a showcase model um, of providing access and affordable primary health care in communities in South Africa. It was only founded um, less than 10 years ago. And today, Unjani Clinics has created more than 470 jobs across South Africa, um, almost 2.9 million patient consults um, in rural communities. And it has uplifted and upskilled um, local talent. Because women, mainly female nurses, about 80% are female in the Unjani Clinic Network. And they've been upskilled and have become entrepreneurs through this model. Um, and, and it really has had a significant impact on providing people in South Africa with primary health care who cannot um, get them so, or who cannot afford medical insurance. The second project um, that we chose uh, took the uh, safety uh, community development um, and tourism angle. And it's called a project called SA Trails Network, um, which is a nonprofit community particularly in the Western Cape at this stage. And what Trails aimed to do was to focus on creating um, the, using the, the existing trails, um, you know, that you see on the side of the, the, the busy routes between Stellenbosch um, and Front. And they've basically taken those routes and they've developed them into safe passages or trails that children can use um, you know, instead of having to cross the busy the busy roads or children have to use to commute to school. So we basically say that SA Trails Network is creating community safety. But what this has done is community members have started to build the trail. So it's given them employment. We have started to develop trail rangers um, who beyond building the trails, um, you know, are, are entrepreneurial or are becoming entrepreneurial in spirit. And then there's also a tourism angle to it because, you know, this is clean route um, and could hopefully extend well beyond the existing um, sphere that Trails currently covers, depending on funding. And then the last project um, that has been included in the WEF network at this stage is called Step Up to a Green Startup. Mm. And this is really aimed at addressing the climate change um, angle, but also the youth development and what it does is it, it addresses climate change and the green economy through developing the right skill sets amongst the youth. Um, and not only then are they enabling the youth to start their, their orders, but it's also, you know, a project that rewires the mindsets of our future South Africans who are going to be the future of tomorrow. Um, you know, from purely just being a job seeker to being a job um a job creator, but also job creator the interests of the environment and the climate in mind. And that's such an important concept because in today's day and age, you know, if you're a business or if, you, if you're an employer or an employee, it's no longer just about making profit and money or um, sustaining a livelihood. It's really about ensuring that we protect and give back in, in the same process. And this is what Step Up to a Green Startup aims to achieve as well. So as you can tell, three 
very different projects focusing on essential needs in South Africa, all creating and hopefully sustaining jobs. But as you can see collectively, the social impact that they will make to the South African economy will continue to be vast. Amazing projects. And I like that you're not just, you know, creating jobs, but you're also bringing in the youths inside. Because like you said, this youths are the future of South Africa. And so they need to be groomed on how not to just, you know, get jobs, but also be job creators as well. Um, so the launch has taken place. How has the reception been so far? So the World Economic Forum New Champions had a soft launch, um, you know, late last year okay. um, with, with an announcement um, that this community was going to be created. But of course, with the challenge, uh, we were unable to have the WEF delegation um, join us for an actual launch in the South African community. So so we finally managed, um, you know, to, to have the very senior delegation from the World Economic Forum join us in South Africa. Um, recently, as you mentioned, and, you know, we had a room full of leading organizations, corporate leaders, um, the who's who's in South Africa, um, together with the support, as I said, of a very senior WEF delegation, which basically shows you how serious the World Economic Forum is taking an initiative like this. Mm. Mm. The um, the response in terms of attendance and at the launch has been great. It's very clear that many organizations in South Africa, um, from the largest uh, across sectors um, to SMMEs, all have very similar shared purpose. Um, and what WEF does, it, it, you know, this community particularly will um, combine or bring together uh, various organizations with the shared purpose of making a difference to South Africa. From here on, though, um, we have been encouraging um, organizations with a similar purpose to get involved and join the new champions. In addition to support these three particular projects mm -hmm. and also put forward other projects um, that will enhance job creation in South Africa um, and that can also tick the social impact boxes that WEF intends through the new champions community. Mm. Speaking about, um, you know, you know, you're calling for more partnership. If someone wants to tap into this, how can you get in any websites, you know, something, a way to get through? Sure. So at this stage, given that Imperial and Risk Insights are the strategic partners, um, you know, there's three ways of potentially having. Um, the first way is to either contact, um, you know, Anushka or Andre Bognovov at um, at Risk Insights or myself, Isha Man Singh at Imperial or thirdly, um, through the WEF New Champions um, contact, which we can provide as well. Um, and then from there on, in a discussion with the World Economic Forum, New Champions lead, um, you know, to understand the requirements of becoming a New Champions member. Okay. Because as you can imagine, WEF does have some criteria that companies and organizations need um, to attest to. And then lastly, once that process has been done, um, you know, we will... Um, We'll have discussions with the relevant individuals, organizations in terms of how can they get involved in expanding the agenda and the objectives we've set aside for the World Economic Forum New Champions in South Africa specifically. Mm. I like that you said expanding because I'm going to ask, uh, is the World Economic Forum, you know, looking to expand to other African countries? Can other, you know, SMEs from Africa, for example, tap into uh, this opportunity that this is bringing? So at this stage, um, and you know, and I, and I don't want to talk on behalf of WEF here, but okay. um, you know, certainly at this stage, they have reached out, uh, and even at the event itself, we did have participation from other leading organizations in other key African countries. Okay. Um, you know, so so um, the likes of certain uh, big four firms that had representation in other other African countries, some other international. Um, and these partnerships were leveraged either through Risk Insights or Imperial um, because we do have a quite a vast network across the African continent. Um, but going forward, I, I do believe that there is opportunity. Um, you know, South Africa is the test case, but there's certainly a lot of interest and a lot of the issues that have, have been identified in South Africa are not uncommon to other African countries. 
Um, and I do believe that it would be um, in everyone's best interest for WEF in future, um, you know, to potentially consider expansion of the new champions communities in other African countries. There is a lot of interest, as I've mentioned. Currently stands, um, if there are other organizations and uh, communities that sit outside of South Africa that would like to get involved in WEF, um, to follow the same principles and channels that I outlined earlier. WEF is very collaborative, um, as, as I've said, and, you know, they look forward to the ups. And, uh, and hopefully through these partnerships, we can continue to grow impact through the WEF community across the continent in time. Definitely, I agree. Uh, still speaking on this partnership. Now, what's the shared culture between Risk Insights and Imperial? Why did two of you decide to come together to work with uh, WEF? So I think it all starts off, as I said earlier, with a, a common vision and yes. purpose. Um, and if you look at the work, you know, I mean, Risk Insights and Imperial have very different business models, um, working across very different industries. But I, you know, it actually started off with the relationship Risk Insights and Imperial. Um, interestingly enough, because Risk Insights, um, you know, really started to provide data driven insights around a very, um, interesting and topical, um, you know, topical issue of environmental, social and governance or ESG as most people know it. And Risk Insights took the lead from a financial modeling perspective around ESG and Imperial, um, you know, having been a leading logistics player on the continent, ESG has become such a critical part of our strategy that we've got to a point where we integrate it into daily business practices and that it's no longer just a nice to have this. And through this, you know, Risk Insights and Imperial formed a relationship, a business relationship over the, the past few years. Um, Risk Insights partnership with WIF, um, you know, did extend uh, for a few years, given Risk Insights was a recipient of the New Champions Award. And through that part, between Risk Insights and WIF and Risk Insights and Imperial, um, you know, we found, uh, we found a common purpose that just fitted in so well with what WIF wanted to achieve through new champions in South Africa. And already two very established organizations in the South African sphere with vast networks shared partnerships with WIF. I just think it was a natural fit. Mm -hmm. Okay, now before I let you go, uh, I would like us to talk about the key issues to sustainable growth for SMEs in Africa. You know, um, like you mentioned earlier, SMEs hold power, but it's like Africa hasn't fully tapped into it. So what are these key issues and how is this partnership helping to close the gaps? So as I said earlier, I think the, the first key issue is really around um, acknowledgement and realization okay. um, that a deliberate you know, decision is around facilitating the growth of SMEs. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that is at government level, that's at continent level, it's at global organizational level, it's at um, local corporate level, um, where everyone needs to understand that SMMEs do a and role, and, but need the support. Secondly, I think the other big challenge is, of course, financing. Right. Mm -hmm. And especially in the African context where they might be fantastic entrepreneurs with great business models, but they, of course, need access to some form of capital um, to be able to be given a chance, right? And then it's about the sustainability of, of the SMEs and their business models. Because if, you know, if, if organizations um, invest in SMEs, but their business model is not sustainable, then it becomes almost a one-hit wonder, and it actually doesn't solve the problem for sustainable job creation. So I think those, but I think these partnerships that we talk about should not only be based on driving, you know, skills and growth, um, but really, as I said earlier, it is about job creation. It's about the access to the right funding. It's about the access to the right networks. And I think something like the particular WEF partnership in terms of new champions, um, you know, not only will we include and are already including some SMME projects within the network, but through through including these projects, they have access and visibility to the World Economic Forum platforms where other organizations across the world, world 
um, you know, have visibility of these projects and what they do and the impact they create. People are always looking for projects, but projects of value and projects that tick the right governance boxes mm. to invest in. And through the new champions communities and the um, the chosen projects, that's what it does for the possibility to potentially access the funding. And through that, I think growing um, their organizations and their impacts. And, and I'm hoping that these three particular projects will be a great test case to actually show that even though they're already very successful SMMEs, uh, their impact through additional funding from the WEF network as being part of new champions um, could ultimately just, you know, grow these businesses from strength to strength to the point where other projects and other businesses say, we want to get involved. We've got these projects. Let's try to grow them further using the WEF platform and the visibility. And that's what partnerships should do. It's not only about funding. It's not only about job creation. It's a combination and don't underestimate the power of partnerships and networks in, in, in terms of growth. Amazing. I, I don't I don't hope but I believe that, you know, this uh, three projects that you mentioned would definitely do great because it's not just about the funding, like you said, but also trying to make a social impact on the economy as well. Great job you're doing. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, through, uh, and we always spoke about partnerships, but, you know, media plays a, a big key in that in terms of yes. creating their projects and for the new champions community in South Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, so thank you very much um, for acknowledging this fantastic initiative that WIF has initiated with the support of Risk Insights and Imperial. And we're hoping that the media plays a critical role in continuing to help us create that awareness mm-hmm. and hopefully um, contribute to um, improving social impacts on the African continent. All right, no problem. Thank you, Esha, for coming on the show. It was truly amazing talking to you and, you know, learning about uh, WEF and the initiatives that you have. Thank you very much and hope your um, listeners find this very insightful. And we look forward to welcoming more new champions to the community in South Africa. No problem. That was Esha Mansingh, Executive Vice President, Corporate Affairs and Investor Relations at Imperial, the Young Global Leader World Economic Forum 2022, and Co-Chairman WEF New Champions SA Board. More coming your way. Stay tuned. Mm-hmm.